Welcome back everybody. We're going to talk about curvilinear motion with polar coordinates. So this is going to be a new way on how to map out a particle's position relative to an angle and its position vector. So really what we're doing is actually mapping out rotation as well as translational motion of a particle. So I already drew this path and it's moving from this point over here to some point over here. So the first thing I want to do is actually define some arbitrary position. So if we define some position, and we call this vector r, and to define this vector, I'm going to use this tilde underneath the, the vector itself to denote that it is a vector. So at this given point, we could define the particle's position relative to some angle theta being defined from the positive x-axis. So what I want to do is actually write this vector, this r vector, in terms of unit vectors. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a unit vector, I'm going to call it er, and it's going to have a unit vector. So what this vector does, it's, unit, it's a unit vector, meaning its magnitude is 1, but it has a sense of direction that is in the radial direction, which is de defined by this vector r. So what we can do is actually scale our vectors relative to this unit vector. And I also want to define this other vector. This vector is going to be perpendicular to the unit vector e r. So we're going to call this e theta. And basically what this vector really does is, is it's tracking how the particle rotates along the path. So as you can see here, you can think of the particle rotating around some origin, which is going to be this point right here. It's rotating about that origin, which can be defined relative to this angle theta. So let me write out the properties of ER. So ER is always points in the radial direction. And the magnitude of ER is equal to 1. And that's simply because it's a unit vector, so the only purpose of that unit vector is to specify a direction. Now for E theta, E theta is always perpendicular to ER. One thing to note is that this does not imply that E theta is tangent to the path of motion. I know e theta might look tangent in this uh, path, and it might be, I do not know. It does not have to be tangent to the path. It can be, but it does not have to be. But what it has to be is that e theta has to be perpendicular to e r. Now you might be asking, why did I draw e theta in this direction? And that's simply because e theta points along the rotation of the particle. So since the particle is rotating around the origin in this direction, e theta will be pointing in that general direction. So to formally define that, what we could say is that e, uh, the unit vector e r cross with e theta will be pointing in the positive k direction, or the positive z direction of this orientation or this Cartesian coordinate system. So in this diagram, that would be the vector that is pointing directly at you. And basically, if you take the cross product, that basically means you're rotating along that direction. So if you remember this by taking the moments in statics, that same idea of positive rotation is defined by this cross product. So if you have this definition, ER will always point along the path of a rotation. So in this case, ER is actually rotating in this direction. So if we do that same cross product and we get a negative K, what that means is that the object is rotating in this direction. So these are just mathematically more formal definitions on how to define e theta. But in a very simple sense, e theta points along the path of motion. It goes along with the motion of the particle. So now that we have that, what I want to do is actually define this position vector. So we called it r tilde. I want to redefine this position vector in terms of e r and e theta. So actually, all we have is e r because the radial direction points in the direction of ER, it, the, the, the R vector doesn't have any component in the E theta direction. So what we can do is actually scale, take the magnitude of R and scale it with uh, the unit vector ER. So we're, we're basically taking this magnitude and multiplying it by ER just to give that magnitude some direction. So instead of breaking this uh, R vector into components, what we're doing is just using the, this new notation er and e theta to define the vector. 
And one thing to point out is that this vector or these two unit vectors go along the path of motion. So at any given point, there may they may be changing direction. So we, we could say here this might be uh, e theta or e r, and then e theta would be pointing maybe in this direction. And again, e theta doesn't have to be tangent to the curve. But what has to be is that e theta is perpendicular to e r. And you can see at any given moment of time, uh, e r is changing direction as well as e theta changing direction. These unit vectors just go along the path. All they do is rotate depending on how the origin is defined. So the main thing I wanted to do in this video is actually to define a position vector in terms of these new unit vectors e r and e theta. And again, these unit vectors are going along the path of motion. And all, as they go along the path of motion, the axes, or E theta e and E r, are rotating along the path. And we can use this concept and use the, concept, the concepts of derivatives to find the velocity and acceleration vectors in polar coordinates. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to demonstrate this new way to define position so that later on we can develop the ideas of velocity and acceleration in terms of polar coordinates. So hopefully this helped you guys. In the next video, we'll go over the velocity vector in polar coordinates. So I'll see you in the next video.